Namaste. And welcome back to Grow with the Jan family. Mera naam Anjali hai. Hum ache hai. Kaise hai aap? And today, we're going to share with you something a little bit different than we normally do. We want to talk to you about how the U.S. has the Second Amendment, which is the right to bear arms, and how important we feel like it is for India to bring in that culture, to bring that into their um, 1.3 billion people, yeah. so that things like 2611 Don't never happen. happen again. So... We have a little speech. Newt Gingrich talks about why it's so important to have the Second Amendment, how it has helped our country. And because India is a democratic country, one of the largest democratic countries, we feel like to help your defense, this is another layer in the many layers that would help stuff so that things don't bad don't happen again. Yeah. There are pros and cons to all of it, so we're going to tell you our vision here at the Jan family, what we see, how it's affected us, how we now bear arms to defend our own family, and that's what it's for. It's for defense. It's for somebody breaking down the door to come hurt the kids, to steal our stuff. It, that is the only reason we have it. It is not for hunting. It is not for fun. It is for defense. And we feel like if India, like here, you train people, you educate them, they have to go through a list of questions and government scanning before you can buy one legally. Illegals always happen everywhere. We've seen them on the, you know, people throwing stones at the police. And then I've seen people with guns in India. They're terrorists because guns are illegal. But this is why we feel like you need to have sane citizens that have been trained and educated by people like military police yeah uh the police need something bigger than a stick please and so we want to share you know part of us growing this channel not only to educate the kids about india and all the wonderful things about india but to also give you our opinion on where we think things could get a little better or you know what we think you could do differently that would make India the next big country. Because you guys are coming up there. Modi's been doing an amazing job. So we feel like this would be the next step. Your defense needs to beef it up. And we think, you know, getting the citizens trained and educated. And like here, there's a process. You have to yeah. go through so that you are not crazy. You know, the police know you have a gun. You've gone for training and education, so you know how to use it. And there's, it's not going to happen overnight. But I feel like we feel here that if the army has better weaponry, the police actually have guns that work. Yeah. And then you train good citizens that are educated on how to use it safely, how to store it safely, how to fire it safely, and only fire it if you are going to die or somebody else is going to die if you don't kill them first there there's a many layers to this so we're going to share this speech with you and then we're going to talk a little bit more after that ready yeah, yeah. for an unarmed man may be attacked with greater confidence than an armed man Bullies always run away from other bullies. Yeah. This is my favorite. Among the many misdeeds of the British rule in India, history will look upon the act of depriving a whole nation of arms as the blackest. And this is from the peaceful Gandhi. So true. Yeah, and the reason why he was in power for as long as he was because you don't let the people, when you're a dictator, have yeah. weapons. Because they might overthrow you. Our first founding document says, we hold these truths to be self-evident. Very important concept. 
They didn't say we hold this ideology, we hold this philosophy, we hold this political platform. These were people trying to get at what they thought was the truth about human nature, the truth about whether or not you have rights. And what did they say those truths were? First, that we're all created equal. Mm -hmm. And they meant equality before the law, not equality of outcome, but equality of opportunity. They said, second, that we are endowed by our creator with certain unalienable rights, among which are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, why does that matter? This is what American exceptionalism is all about. It's not that we're bigger, stronger, richer. We are the only country in human history which says, you personally, every single person in this room, God has given each one of you personally rights which make you sovereign. Notice they said these rights are unalienable. Now when you get to the Bill of Rights, the Second Amendment begins in a very interesting way. It talks about the inherent right to bear arms. It doesn't say the Constitution gives you the right, which implies that the Founding Fathers who wrote the Constitution believed that your right to bear arms came from your Creator and was unalienable. It did not come from the government. Now, you might say, why did they think this? And I want to recommend to you, it's a fascinating story in history. If you go back and you look at 236 years ago this month, the British Army set out from Boston to crush the rebellion. I wonder why. Tension had been building for a number of years, and the Americans were being very uppity, and the British Empire was the richest, most powerful empire in the world. And David Hackett Fisher wrote a tremendous book called Paul Revere's Ride, in which he, Fisher's a great historian, and he describes the setting that led to Paul Revere's Ride and what happened after he rode out to warn the colonists. And he points out in his book that the British Army knew how to crush peasant rebellions. India. They'd crushed rebellions in Ireland, they'd crushed rebellions in Scotland, they'd crushed rebellions in Wales, they'd crushed rebellions in rural England. And so the professional soldiers who were marching out that day, they, they knew what they were doing. They were going to encounter a bunch of rabble, they were going to scatter them, they were going to seize their weapons, they were going to imprison their leaders, and it would all be over. And then they ran into this problem. They didn't have any peasants to fight, and they didn't have any rabble to fight. They had freestanding Americans yeah. who had been training as a militia and who were prepared to fight the British Army toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And by the end of the day, the British Army was running back to Boston, suffering substantial casualties, and in a state of shock. Now, the Founding Fathers knew this history. They had lived this history. And they knew that if they had not had the right to bear arms, they would have been crushed that day. They then engage, they issue a Declaration of Independence. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say, and I don't want to offend anybody here who's a hunter, the right to bear arms is not about hunting. It's not about target practice. The right to bear arms is a political right designed to safeguard freedom so that no government can take away from you the rights which God has given you. And it was written by people who had spent their lifetime fighting the greatest empire in the world. And they knew that if they had not had the right to bear arms, they would have been enslaved. And they did not want us to be enslaved. And that is why they guaranteed us the right to protect ourselves. It is a political right of the deepest importance to the survival of freedom and America.
If you were Castro, Chavez, Ahmadinejad, Kim Jong-il, would you feel comfortable if your people had the right to bear arms? So when you look at all the dictatorships in the UN who are cheerfully willing to strip us of our rights, you have to be especially militant about making sure you have an American president who insists on our rights without regard to world opinion. Well, let me tell you, we need to have the same moral conviction of what we're talking about. We need to go around both in our own country and around the planet and calmly and pleasantly and cheerfully say to people, we believe in our Declaration of Independence. We believe the Founding Fathers were correct. We believe there are truths that relate to humanness. We believe that our rights do come from our Creator, and we do not believe any government can take away our rights because they are ours, and we define the government. The government does not define us, and that's what makes us Americans, and we feel sorry when other countries have weaker rules and fewer rights and worse governments and more dangerous dictatorships. We would like them to learn that there's a better way. There's a way based on rights, there's a way, a way based on your creator having endowed you. And part of that way is the right to bear arms so that you never have to be afraid of any dictatorship ever taking away your rights. What you are doing is historically and morally important. You should be proud of it. You should tell your friends and neighbors about it. You should help them learn a little bit of history. And when they do, you're going to find they like you are going to want to defend the United States of America and the rights which have made us historically unique. Thank you. Good luck and God bless you. He is an amazing speaker. And yeah. he definitely puts it well into words. Into words, very story-like, but the story about, you know, Paul Bear's ride and the British coming that really puts it in perspective to me, definitely. Yeah. Because if the Americans didn't have, if they didn't arm themselves like the military, they would have never won against the British. No. And like Gandhi said, the blackest day was when the British took away arms from Indians. Because they knew... If Indians have arms, then they're going to defeat them. Exactly. And so this is why we think the Second Amendment would be something that India should think about changing. It's not going to be overnight. It's definitely going to be a process and a mindset. But if you get your military well armed, your police well armed, and then you use, you know, maybe um, some retired military people that could be armed and then train civilians on how to use a gun yeah. properly, educate them on safety of it, how to store it, lock it up. You know, here we lock them up. The kids know not to touch them. This, these are yeah. not no toys. No one touches them. These are not, yeah. We have gone for training, for safety training. We have gone for practice. And now we own probably more guns than most Indian police officers. Which is very sad. Which is kind of sad. When I see them with sticks chasing after people, like, I just want to cry. Yeah. Because stuff like this wouldn't happen. 2611 would not have happened if civilians could have taken over and slowed them down, at least, before the and police and military. And at least had military. something to arm themselves. Like yeah. a gun. Like... That would not have happened. They wouldn't have gotten that far because the police would have already been there and the civilians would have at least stopped some of them. Slowed them down. Yeah. At least slowed them down. If you had some civilians with guns, if your police were well armed, you could have prevented four days of terror from happening in Mumbai. Like, that should have never happened. Yeah, ever. And here it's about... so. Here's our process in this. Like, we feel like if you bring in, there's a lot of countries that make guns. China's one of them, Turkey's another one, and India could be a manufacturer. You guys make yeah. a lot of great things. You have a lot of really smart people. And then I think if you start manufacturing them, you can say, okay, well, this works really good, but we like this better. And your military can get involved and say, like, well, this works better than this. And you can start tweaking them, and then you can start making your own better ones. And then arm your military. 
arm your police, police officers. Please, I don't want to see them walking around with a stick ever again. And then slowly start getting this mindset of, you know, the people need to be able to have guns. They need to be good citizens with no background, bad backgrounds. Terrorists are always going to get guns. Yeah. But, like, they need to be good civilians, like you said, with good backgrounds, and the police need to know they have a gun. Mm -hmm. So if something happens with them around, you know, like, something might have happened right. while they were gone. Right. So here, our guns are locked up, but every gun that we've purchased, we've given our driver's license, our address, they check our background to make sure we're not crazy, we have no criminal records, and that it's for defense. And so... The police know how many guns we have in this house, how much ammo we have in this house. So if for some reason somebody's complaining, saying like these crazy Jan family people are outside causing havoc, they're going to be like, oh, they have ammo. We need to go make sure that they're not crazy because yeah. they would have to come take it from us. So there is a process like you don't just walk up and grab a gun. I'm going to tell you guys this story. When my husband and I met for the first time and we went out for dinner, his first question to me when we got in the car was, where is your gun? I heard everybody in the U.S. carries a gun. And I was like, I don't have a gun. And most of my friends don't really carry guns. Um, it wasn't really my thing. For one, we didn't have a house, a family, kids, and the world has been changing, ever changing. As much as I love Gandhi's message of peace, I know that is not always the answer. And such as even he said that you need the Second Amendment. Yeah. Yeah. Even Gandhi said the blackest day was when the British said you cannot have arms. That is so true because here the police stations never get I never hear of a shootout at the police station. Here. I, here. I've never heard of, like, very rare. Once in a while you hear a military base, but they go into, like, the cafeteria when people are eating, and they, they know, like, it's usually internal. It's not usually an external person. They don't go bullies, terrorists. They go looking for easy targets. They yeah. look for easy targets. They don't want locked doors. They don't want, you know, people that have guns. Like, nobody here in the U.S., there has been a lot of mass shootings, and it's very sad, but they pick places that they know there are easy targets, churches, malls, places where... they're not going to have guns or ammo or things. no police officers. You're not going... You're going to a place of worship. I mean, this stuff should never happen. You're always going to have bad seeds. You're always going to have bad seeds. Yeah. And if you tell people they can't have guns... I've seen videos of people with guns in India. Who has them? The bad people, the terrorists, the drug... People that are doing crimes, they have them because no matter what you do, they're going to find a way to get them. Yeah. No matter what. So educating everybody being a part of this like manufacturing i think would definitely help bring in the education have the retired military be backup and have them train civilians like get the people that are good citizens in the town and have some people because if somebody comes in like these attackers from 2611 there was no way if the police were well armed and citizens were armed no way that would have happened and gone on as long no as it way. had. Most of this stuff happens, you know, it takes the police five minutes or so to get to the thing. So whoever is on site is on it. Like if somebody comes into our house, we are the first line of defense. My husband and I are the first line of defense. So they're going to have to come through me and my husband and, and our dogs, our three dogs, our alarm system and everything else that we have set up layers and layers and layers. So we talked about, right? Mm -hmm. Outside layers, we have inside layers, but that's what you need because the police are going to take a few minutes before they're going to get to you. And by then it might be too late. So just like 2611, like it took the police a while to find these guys. It took the military a while to get there. You need some people that are we'll carrying, just go in. that will just go in. I've seen so many people like these people that do this crap do it because they know that you don't have a gun and you're an easy target. 
that they're coming after you because they know you're an easy target. Don't be an easy target. You guys are the next big country. You're coming up behind, you know, the U.S. And, well, I'm not even talking about China right now. Um, you guys are coming up to the next big country. You're the largest democracy. You guys are doing a wonderful job. This is where we feel like you can, you have to beef it up, not only militarily, but with the police as your second backup. And then you need civilians to be part of it. You need to train your civilians to be your next backup so that yeah. if somebody tries to come and attack, you have support. It's all about educating the people. Yeah. You know, we went for training. We had a couple hours class training. We went in and used different firearms. They showed us how to use them, you know, and then, you know, we went there's, there's a process, but it definitely comes with education. If my husband can come from India and be afraid on our first date that I was carrying a gun, <laughs> I think, and now he knows the different types, he knows the different ammo, he knows how to, where the safety lock is, we lock them up, like we going, watching videos on the safest ways to do stuff. There's a training, there's an education background behind it and, and educating the kids. Like yeah. this is not a toy. You are not to touch these. This is for self-defense only there. We are not getting mad at the neighbors and whipping the guns out. Yeah, That's not what it's them. for. This is for home defense and that's it. Yeah. And, but ho India is home. And the U.S. country is our home, too. So India is our home away from home. Education and, and bringing the culture in a little bit. But definitely, I think you can arm the police better and get your retired military to train people. I think then you will have your many layers. And who is going to come in? Which of your neighbors are going to come in if you're all armed and ready like if your doors are locked and you have stuff on your door as soon as if they can't break in they're not going to go in if it's taking too long they're not going to go in right but if they can break in and then you don't have anything to defend yourself they're going to take whatever they want yeah. and so like we said many layers of defense and educating people and doing it right yeah you know so this is our way of sharing our experience and education and we're going to show you you know when we've gone to the range and did some shooting we're going to show you some of the guns we bought we refinished some of them so this is our way of kind of sharing our experiences here with you not only fun family videos but with things we feel like india needs to build up their defense yeah. so that they can be the next big country um alongside the u.s right partners so I hope you guys enjoyed this. And don't forget to subscribe. And join the wonderful Jan family. And we'll, we'll see, see you tomorrow. tomorrow. Bye. Bye.